Happy Soulful Sunday. This is Tomasa Makapinlak, known as the Self-Care Queen, Master Shaman. And today I am reading the new moon chart for cancer that's upcoming on Friday, July 9th at 9.16 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time or 6.16 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So this month, the new moon occurs at 18 degrees of Cancer in the sixth house. What exactly does that mean? Well, the sixth house is all about your self-care, your health, and your daily rituals. And it can also be about your work. So what is does exactly does it mean to have the new moon sitting in the sixth house? Well, for this chart and this time, this month, I'm going to say that this is about you, what rituals, what daily rituals you create for yourself so that you can build your wealth and have your health. And that's the best way I'm going to say that. Many people would just call it self-care. But I'm also going to put it out here because I am that one who tries to encourage people to live their dreams. And so we don't just look at the new moon and what's in a relationship with, but we look at what's going on in the stars overall, or excuse me, the planetary motions overall. And the biggest thing I see here that's happening, and it was happening last month as well, it's because these planets move really slow. So I just want you to know this is a time to really call your dreams in for fruition here and be able to allow the things that no longer serve you to be stripped away. And that's what this Pluto sextiling Neptune is about. So you might find these things happening here. Uh, Neptune is about the dream. It's sitting in his home sign of Pisces. And Pluto, which has been sitting in Capricorn for since 2008, but it's sitting at 25, almost 26 degrees of Capricorn in retrograde, as well as Neptune saying retrograde in its home sign of Neptune. Neptune is the dreamer. Pluto is the one that creates the transformation. So because of this relationship, it's like what transformations need to happen to have the dreams come true. And I want to point out Pluto is then sitting in the 12th house in Capricorn. What exactly does that mean? Well, 12th house is that dream house, that spirit house. So spirit is helping you to strip away things that no longer serve you so that you can have the dreams that you need. And because the dreams are occurring in the second house here, what that is about is how can you have the dreams that you value to help you bring in the wealth so that you can have the life you want. How about that one? Okay, so you probably have heard that Saturn and Uranus have been squaring each other. There's three major squares that have been happening this year. Something happened earlier in the spring, and then you saw it happen last month in June, and then it will happen again sometime, I want to say later on this year. I don't know the exact time. I could look that up for you later, but um, what you have here is a square, and it's still sitting at a square because it's right in there, you know, it's within about two degrees because um, Saturn is at about 12 degrees and Uranus is sitting about 14 degrees. Now, who wins Uranus? Uranus sitting in Taurus in a earth sign and Saturn is sitting in Aquarius in a air sign. And so Saturn is having you think, not just think, but also looking at what for the long term is going to help you. Now, Uranus is going to win because it's direct, but it's also moves slower than Saturn. So let's look at Uranus. It's like what in communications, so I'm going to say internet waves because Uranus rules the internet waves. That's going to happen in the long term to help you in the long term because Saturn's sitting there. So it's random, it's unique, and it's going to be in the communications. And I say, call it the internet because Uranus rules the internet to help you, the collective, 
because Saturn sits in Aquarius and this is about the collective and Uranus is about the collective as well, community collective. Um, so that is going to help us in the long term. And because these guys have a relationship to Mars and Venus being in the seventh house, what partnerships that require the balance of the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine, um, so that the moon and the sun, we would say, but that's just an example, um, to, so that you help yourselves in the long run. So, you know, personally for yourselves, this can mean, uh, a relationship for the long term, a partnership. It can be business or it could be a marriage, partner, romance, etc. Okay. And because it sits in a third house, it is going to be, a, it could be something that happens over the internet waves and something that is going to help the collective in the long run. So all of it helps the collective. So we might see partnerships forming to help the collective and communicate over the internet waves. Okay, so it's like, how are we gonna serve our, the folks in the long run so that they can uh, have internet access to each other? It doesn't have to be right here in front of ourselves, but, um, and then uh, possibly um, serving our neighbors because the third house is about neighbors, communication, short trips, and internet wave trips, I'm going to say. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is that the, the moon, or excuse me, Mars and Venus will be conjunct exactly in a few weeks in Leo. I think it's gonna be like 18 degrees of Leo when that would happen. So Venus is gonna catch up with Mars and Leo. And so this is where relationships, long-term partnerships get solidified a little bit or the will for them are coming. So it might not exactly happen now, but I feel that it's gonna happen that where the talk of marriage or a long-term partnership begins because we're starting to will that. And then when uh, Mars and Venus catch up with each other again later in late January, 2022, early February, 2022, that is when it will be solidified because they'll be in Capricorn then. So you'll see more fruition happens when it happens in the earth sign. Right now it's being willful, it's desire because it's in a fire sign of Leo. Um, and then these things will happen for the long term. Okay, I also want to point out that the moon, the new moon, which is when the sun and moon are conjunct, it is um, it is working with something that happened with Chiron sitting in Aries because Chiron sitting in Aries is about 13 degrees. It's about five degrees difference in those degrees, but the sun and the moon have already passed through 12 degrees of cancer by then. And so this is us looking at our wounds of something that we value and having confidence that things will be okay, especially if it's sitting in the second house, having confidence about our, maybe our bank accounts. You know, um, the second house is about it is a wealth house, it's a house of money, but it's about how you actually put away money for yourself and the need to have a cushion. I was talking with someone about this the other day and they said, well, I don't need a whole lot of money. It's like, well, you like a cushion, right? Yes. Okay, so this is about how you bring in that cushion for yourself and having the confidence that you will have that cushion for yourself because this house likes luxury as well. And so this is about how you're going to do it with self-care because self-care helps you to elevate your vibration. Not only does it help you to elevate your vibration, but it elevates you to a vibration where work becomes easy for you as well. So you'll be much more efficient with work. 
And these are the intentions that need to be called in for this month of the new moon with the new moon sitting in Cancer. So um, that's an overall view of how I see this. We might look at some other things such as Jupiter trining Mercury and Gemini. Uh, Jupiter's actually sitting in Pisces, but you know, it's not that far off. It's probably a few degrees off with the trine. But, you know, we look at how can we be creative with our communications and still expand ourselves. Yeah. Because that Jupiter sitting in the first house, be more of yourself and be creative. I laugh because I just had to do this recently with someone. So, um, ask for what I want and need it and be creative with the way I share it. And so I'm encouraging you all to do that as well. Now the North Node sits in Gemini in the fourth house. So this is, uh, Gemini is all about thinking and communication and education. And so the fourth house is, you know, the intelligence of the fourth house, the emotions, an emotional house is the water house, is the house I would normally say that cancer would appear in but I don't want to call it a cancer house. I want to say it's the house of, it can be about real estate, but it's about the home. How are you coming home to yourself? And I think that's the best way to describe that. How are you coming home to yourself with confidence? Because there is a sextile here with Chiron sitting in 12 degrees or 13 degrees in Aries. And so it's close enough to call that. The North Node is about who we are becoming. How are we becoming ourselves, coming home to ourselves with the self-care that we provide for ourselves so that we can have our dreams weaved in for the long term, come into fruition so we can have the confidence and know that we're going to be okay. So we have that nice cushion to be ourselves. And that, my dear, is the thing for this new moon. I am Tomasa Makapinlek and thank you. And if you wish to join me, I have a despacho ceremony every month for the new moon and I do them online and I have people from all over the world joining me. I have people from Belgium to uh, Texas, to New York, to Maryland, to from Michigan joining me all the time. So uh, it's going to be 9.30 a.m. on Sunday, July 11th, and that's specific daylight time. And so you can join me. They usually last about an hour and a half. There is a small fee for those ceremonies because so many people have experienced it. So many um, beautiful things manifest for them that I feel that that exchange is well worth it. I know the exchange is well worth it. And many people who have joined me, they see so many beautiful miracles happen. So I'm going to ask you to call in those intentions and you can see the event bright event page that's listed here where you can join me. Thank you and hope to see you there. Bye for now.